once that started. And just in case, um, if you haven't seen the exhibition yet, or um, for those who may not have, I am putting the link in chat. That way everybody can see it. And I will also be sharing my screen. So, um, so you know, you will be able to see it on the, on the computer. Uh, so welcome everybody. We are glad you're here. Um, I'm Christine Shoemaker. I run Shoebox Projects. Um, we used to be an on, or uh, my, and please forgive me if my voice is crackly. I have already did two workshops already today. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm also a little loopy from that, but I'm fine. Um, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. I run Shoebox Projects, um, which was an experimental art space. Um, I live at the brewery near downtown LA, which is an arts community. And I had Shoebox Projects um, as a small gallery experimental art space um, before the pandemic. And then after the pandemic, we took it online. And hopefully in a few months, you know, fingers crossed that things get better with COVID um, and everything else in the world. Um, I, you know, I'm hoping to create, you know, to make it a physical space again. So I'm um, looking forward to that eventually. But in the meantime, you know, we were holding these online um, exhibitions, which makes our community smaller. You know, I mean, it brings or makes the, not our community smaller, it makes our community bigger, but it makes the world smaller, you know, because we're meeting people from all over now, which is the really cool thing. Um, I also run Shoebox Arts, which is a support network. Oh. Um, and excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and mute um, just that way we don't have any feedback or anything if uh, anything's coming through. Um, but Shoebox Arts is a support network for artists and I also run Art and Cake, which is an online art magazine. Um, and like I said, I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, we started, um, when we turned Shoebox Projects into an online art space, um, we had curated exhibitions and we've also had solo exhibitions. And we also decided to create these juried exhibitions um, to support our artists. And um, Kendra worked with us with Shoebox Arts and was interested in, you know, juring slash curating an exhibition. And so, you know, it, we're all about like helping artists do that, you know, learn the behind the scenes of what a juried exhibition is like and even curating. So, you know, we've like walked Kendra through it the whole time, you know, working together. She came up with the title and the idea, and she'll talk about that in a minute. And, and we've had some really, really fun, um, you know, exhibitions and, you know, seen a lot of really talented artists come through. And um, I've gotten so many compliments on, I meant to tell you this, Kendra, um, on Spooky Camp, you know, because it's such a great show. It's, you know, it really is all of the work together. You know, it's, yeah, it's really, really cool. So I can't wait to hear all the artists talk about the work. Um, but one thing I wanted to do is because I'm all about community and I'm all about people like connecting people, you know, I'd love for you if you want to, to like put your website, your Instagram and chat, and that way everybody can follow each other. And, you know, you have easy access um, to each other. And if you don't know, like at the end, um, you know, at the end of this, if you want to save your chat, um, if you open up the chat, there's three dots. If you click on the three dots, it says save chat. You can save the chat onto your computer. So that way um, you don't have to like click on anything right away. You can go back to it. Um, so just remember to save the chat, you know, at the end. And yeah, you know, it's all about, you know, supporting each other, following each other, you know, building our following that way and, you know, stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think, let me see. Oh, good. I had a sticky up here record meeting, so I wouldn't forget that too. <laughs> Because that's just how I am. Um, so I think with that, I will go ahead and pass it on to Kendra so she can introduce herself, what she does, and where the idea for Spooky Camp came from. And um, and yeah, Kendra, I'll pass it on to you. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Got awesome. It. <laughs> um, uh, hi, so I am broadcasting to you from a uh, Hampton Inn in Hood River, Oregon. <laughs> um, and uh, I so sorry if, if it it sounds funny at all, but um, uh, my name is Kendra Larson. I'm an artist educator here in, uh, in well in Portland, and um, I. I'm primarily a painter. Um, 
I grew up in, in Salem and uh, Salem, Oregon, went to undergrad at PNCA, the Pacific Northwest College of Art, went to grad school in, in, at the University, University of Wisconsin-Madison um, and have an MFA in painting and drawing. Um, and I've just always loved art. I've always loved the art community. I've loved being active um, in all sorts of curatorial projects, but also I have an art podcast that I host with my sister. Um, I teach at Portland State, teach mostly painting and drawing there. Um, and my artwork, um, I, I do large scale um, landscape pieces, but with a twist. They're, they're exploring ideas of the sublime, but um, with, a, with a nod to things that are sort of uneasy or uh, um, hard, to, hard to call necessarily majestic or beautiful, but... Um, uh, so I'm, I'm exploring like the, the darker, more complex side of Pacific Northwest landscapes. Um, and that is kind of where the idea from, for this exhibition came from. Um, there's something different about fearful artwork, artwork that's, that, that is gory or causes nightmares. There's a difference between that and campy, spooky. And I think that that campy and spooky things. I'm thinking of like Young Frankenstein, or um, maybe you know, um, maybe a little bit David Lynch, a little bit um, artists like uh, artwork like that, and, and how how that kind of spooky, that kind of eerie, could can um, is almost inviting in a way that allows us to talk about other topics, um, and. And so, and I also just thought it'd be cool to see, you know, how, how many different takes on the idea of spooky can we get and what does it mean to have them all in one place. And um, after we did the call, we had over 400 pieces submitted um, and it was, it was a blast looking through everyone's work. Um, it was, I, I did, I, I, I really let my intuition kind of guide my choices. I really decided I, I I did a cursory look at everything and then I went back through and I pulled out the pieces that um, that hit that note of spooky, but then also went a step further and touched on other themes in a clever, unique way. Um, I did not choose pieces. There were a few pieces that were really gory and I didn't do those. And, um, and I and there were a few pieces with clowns, and that's just too scary. So I <laughs> no clowns. Um, uh, and then another kind of driving force for me was um, variety of materials. Um, so I know I'm a painter and I love drawing, but um, I wanted to make sure that there was a, di a, di a diverse material material quality to the show, so sculptures and videos as, as well as photography. Um, another guiding um, element for me when I was choosing work was, um, oh, I had the idea and then it disappeared. <laughs> um, uh, first the, oh, just, and, um, and I'll, and I wanted, the, so I wanted the show to also have a ton of work, but not, but also um, diverse artists too. So you probably noticed that I only chose one piece. Um, there were a few people that I wanted to choose more from, but I, I kind of reined myself in a little bit to keep the, the, the show at 35 pieces. I thought that that was a nice number, um, especially for an online show. Um, so that was kind of my ideas on how I chose the pieces. Um, and everyone's work was so stellar. Like, I'm, I was really excited to see what y'all did. I was really excited to see all the narratives woven into your work. Um, and that just the quality of your work was just wonderful and inspiring. Um, and uh, everything from uh, the quilt with the aliens. <laughs> Is that artist here? I, I, I judged him blind by the way. So I didn't know whose work was, I, I, I didn't attach a name to him. In the initial spot, but 
I love that we have that piece in here and then we have some oil paintings. Um, we have a really fantastic stop motion in this piece, stop motion piece, and we have um, kind of more staged photography pieces and sculpture. So it's, it's a pretty cool show. Um, I feel like I'm rambling. Am I missing anything there, Christine? Let me unmute there. Um, <clears throat> I know, you know, you kind of place the work in, you know, in an order, you know, in the exhibition itself. Did you have any, you know, any reason for any work being in any specific place? Um, uh, well, I really like the variety. So um, I didn't want to put all the videos next to each other or anything. Um, and I wanted to end with Jeremy's piece, Jerry Riggleman. Um, I think that there's something about that piece. Um, it just feels like a nice way to end the conversation. So if you, if you read it like a book from top to bottom, um, it's just that it feels like a nice ending piece. Um, I feel like when I apply to shows and stuff, I always, I mean, I want all the work to be strong, but the, it, the final piece uh, is what people leave with. So um, there's something about that piece that I think encapsulated the entire show in a nice way. Awesome. Does that answer awesome. your question? Yeah. <laughs> And um, we didn't forget there are awards and we'll be announcing those at the end. <laughs> so that means you have to stay <laughs> if you want to hear, but it is recorded. So um, yeah, I think with that, we could probably go ahead and get started looking at the work. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to share my screen and I'll scroll down. And if the artist is here, um, we'd love to just hear for like a minute or two, because we do have a lot of artists in the show. Um, just like a minute or two, you know, to take a moment to tell us about the work and, you know, um, and maybe why, if like, if that's your regular genre or, you know, what caught your attention about the show, you know, I think I got several emails, you know, saying, oh my God, this is perfect for me. Thank you so much. You know, stuff like that. I didn't tell you that Kendra either since it was blind, <laughs> but, um, you know, so I know it really like it, you know, it, it hit on, um, uh, you know, I mean, that specific genre, you know, that a lot of people are interested in. So, um, so yeah, you know, I mean, I can't wait to hear the artists talk about their work. And, um, and again, if you came on, you probably saw we're sharing our Instagram, our, you know, information websites in chat. So please do that and save the chat at the end. So you have that. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and share the screen. And let me see. And what I'll do is um, go, let's see. Um, can everybody see the screen okay? Okay, great. Um, and we'll start at the top and, um, you know, and if the artist is here, um, you know, we'll let them, um, you know, kind of go from there. And of course, Lynn, I know you're here. And um, if you have any questions for the artists, um, if you want to put them in chat and if the artists, you know, I mean, we don't want to, like take too much time for each artist but you know if there's any questions or you know if you want to put it in chat we can see if maybe um, if the artist can see it or um you know have the artist you know answer really fast we'll see how that goes but um yeah lynn are you trying to unmute there there i am oh. <laughs> hey got me okay you are kind of going cutting in and out I know Lynn has a, doesn't have the best connection up there. Hello, hello. Well, I, first of all, thank you so. Oh, fully. Lynn, I'm you gonna turn me. off you your video. Um, I turned off your video yeah, to see if um, that helps. Yeah, maybe. So go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just really interested in that area that, that exists between um, humor and camp and seriousness um, and, and exploring that. I won't say it's my um, 
usual genre, but I do like working in in sort of magical realism, uh, you know, where where it's like maybe not exactly uh, normal things happening in the in the picture plane. Um, and I also like narrative art. I just feel like, I don't know why, I just have to do something with some kind of narrative to it. So just portraiture isn't that interesting. Um, so yeah, I was really excited and, and you know, wanted to really kind of honor this, this, this idea. And I thought, well, you know, I, I really always felt so I was always interested in the women screaming, you know, in, in old horror movies, because I never could do that. I mean, I always like when I'm having a dream, a nightmare, I just kind of can't really scream like they do, you know, that 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 full throttle um, sound. And, and so I figure, well, you know what, they can just do that for me and and i also think it, it's really coming to me that that I, I think maybe a lot of people are feeling this way at this moment in time since probably what spring of, of 2020 um you know it's just kind of like wow what's next what's gonna happen next and and i you know i think we all kind of uh, get up every day and, and look at the news and, and um, have this feeling of, of fear and trepidation. Um, and I also think that in a, in, a, in a different sort of context, I was thinking about this in terms of, um, you know, being, being a woman, it, it hopefully calls into question the, the the structures that are are created to uh you know make women feel like they have to uh, accept victimization and and subservience and, and being subordinate and um you know hopefully that that kind of can call the people's mind. Like I said, it's not a standard uh, genre that I've been working in. How it was so much fun doing this picture <laughs> that I have really done. I, I started um, and a couple more that are, are gonna be coming up. So I really, really enjoyed working this way. And it, it's oil, it's oil on panel, it's quite small. Uh, I'm not sure if the dimensions are on there, but the, the actual piece is, is quite small. I think it's about nine by 12, something like that. So they're, they're fairly small. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. You know, it's sure. a great piece to like start off, you know, everything. <laughs> it like puts us in the mood, I think. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Is Justin here? I don't, didn't see his name. All right. Um, but I, can I, I, can I just say oh. something about Justin's work? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, after I chose this piece, I went and looked at, after I learned everyone's name, <laughs> I looked everybody up and I gotta say his pieces are like this big. <laughs> they're itty bitty, they're miniatures. So I, I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's, it's, it, it added an extra layer of like, oh my goodness, this thing is so cool. Wow. And, you know, I mean, we have the dimensions, but the dimensions don't mean anything. You know, I mean, it's really hard to sense, you know, yeah. what they look like. Yeah, the online show kind of equalizes things in a weird way. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, all right, Laura. Oh, you're muted, Laura. 
Okay. Hello. <laughs> hi. 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 Sorry. Should I turn off my camera? No. 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 You're fine. Okay. Unless, okay. Yeah, Lynn had to because her um, bandwidth isn't very good. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that what really got me excited about this show was both the title uh spooky camp which i i think has a lot of like humor I, and also i looked i guess i'm in the habit if i enter a show i like to look at the jurors work and i gotta say i really fell in love with kendra's painting and drawing so just really I found it like I was like oh yeah this is an artist I didn't know about before so it's like I, I wonderful work and I got really excited about uh, you know uploading some images from a series that has had very very little little exposure if any actually yet so um uh basically I'm a photographic artist. I've done a lot of mixed media work installations, um, small, short, little animations, and then usually multi-paneled photographs, um, like big pieces that are structured out of smaller pieces put together. Um, this particular image comes from a series called Illuminated Animals, and most of them are diptychs, but this one is a, is a single image, and it's, um, I think I started this, it, it's weird, but I started the series back when Trump was elected to president, and I just had a very upsetting, like, reaction, as everybody did, and for some reason, I started going around my studio, which is downstairs from our upstairs, with a flashlight. And I have this trippy flashlight that uh, will zoom to like a circular uh, shape of light. So it, 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 the flashlight itself vignettes everything in its view if you if you fix it in a certain way. So. I don't know, I, I just for, felt like I was forced sort of into the sort of basement sub-level of my mind and I was trying to like wrap my head around what had just happened. And I started looking at whatever I had pinned on the wall with this flashlight and seeing it as, you know, a, a brightly illuminated image within a dark field, which, and, and I have been working a long time with this vignetted image, even going back to when I used to work in a dark room. And I always created my images with a vignette that I would either create on camera or in the dark room printing process. But this vignette is created, of course, by my, my flashlight itself. And um, I'm also very interested in, in um, animal. Um, both domestic and wild, particularly wild, um, just because we live here on the edge of Los Angeles, uh, right up, up against the mountains. So it's like, you know, we're on the, the, the intersection of the wild and the residential. Um, and we have a lot of animals coming through our yard. You know, I've had everything in my studio from scorpions to um, right up, right outside my window, bears, bobcats, we've even had a mountain lion, and most of them I have been able to photograph. So, but this particular image is a picture of my sister's cat called Mac, and um, I, I, I loved the image, and I had it pinned up on the wall, and it's, um, by flashing the, by using the flashlight on the image of the, of the cat, uh, it was already kind of a, a, a extreme image of a, of a cat. I was imitating, um, <clears throat> another famous image. I mean, just by accident, I realized that I had uh, imitated another famous image of a dog by a wonderful Japanese photographer. So this was like my cat answer to his dog photograph look you know the cat looking just terribly angry and everything um but I, I guess using the circular light it sort of makes it moon like like an image on the moon you know cat on the moon but also I wanted to reference the 
distance between the, the, the reef photographing of an image creates a necessary distance between the image and, and the viewer. And that's the way I feel about wildlife right now. Like we're looking at our dying wildlife from a dislocated position in time as we continue to lose uh, animals, plants, you know, insects, to you know a dying planet i mean i hate to say that but it does feel pretty grim right now that life is uh life on earth is is in the balance and i think we're all feeling that and of course now we have a whole new uh, disaster taking place on the you know another uh, continent away so things feel grim but ultimately i highly embrace a sort of sense of black humor to basically get us through and a little sliver of hope. So, okay, I think I've taken up my one minute or two or five. So thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. And I'm um, just, uh, if you caught it, we had a Zoom bomber for a second, but I got rid of them. And um, as Bonnie says, spooky, <laughs> you know, part of the exhibition. So it's happening a lot, but I got them pretty fast. So wow. yeah, yeah, hopefully we got that. So um, all right. Thank you so much, Laura. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Is Leslie here? I don't think I saw Leslie. All right. Um, and Jada. I think I saw Jada, maybe. I thought I saw Jada, but maybe not. I think that they might have stepped out. Oh, okay. I don't know if you had to like, yeah. Okay, yeah, we can come back if, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, John. I don't think so. I know there's a couple of iPads there, so I don't know who exactly that is, but um, if it's you, you know, please feel free to unmute. <laughs> and I will say about John's work and, and Jada, and I, I mean, both of those people had a ton of artwork um, that they submitted, but also when I went and looked at them later, they both have a ton of really great work out there. Um, um, and I mean, all of you. So I really hope that you all connect and, and see the other, the, the large breadth of work that's kind of behind these pieces. Thank you. Y'all know, know that, y'all are artists. <laughs> um, and I don't know if Susan is here. I don't think I saw Susan come in. Let's see. Um, and Bonnie's here. Let's see if you, um, we won't, we don't really have time to show the whole video or anything, but um, you know, I can go ahead and play it without the sound if you want to talk over, you know, as it's playing Bonnie. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Um, uh, so it's a stop motion piece, um, and I think I have also had it in my mind since the 2016 election. Um, stop motion is kind of a new medium for me, so it sort of lives um, in my head for a long time before I can actually get it down to making it because it takes a lot of time. Um, and I really loved, um, I love Kendra's work as well. And I love the kind of nod to cinema that she has in her paintings. Um, and I'm also informed a lot by painting. Um, so this piece was kind of in my mind was the, um, there's a painting by Henry Fuseli called the night terror or the nightmare from like 1781 and it shows kind of a woman in a bed with this sort of demon sitting on her chest. Um, so I had that painting in the back of my mind. And then there's another um, movie from the twenties called Dr. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And it's sort of about a, a somnambulist, a sleepwalker that attacks a woman and um, kind of comes in while she's sleeping. And then I have, I love um, Hitchcock and the way that he used color. So I, color kind of informs a lot of my work regardless of the medium. So 
that's what this is about. And then this is kind of also a little bit about a nightmare of kind of the patriarchy and then being a woman and motherhood. And so it kind of encompasses all of those things. So I thought it fit with the theme really well. So there she kind of eats the head of the Cheeto headed man. <laughs> and then, then her young daughter comes in or da we'll say baby, so. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Bonnie. I remember seeing the cabinet of Dr. Caligari in a film class and I loved it. Oh my gosh. I just, I totally loved it. And this is great. Thank you so much. We're glad you're part of the exhibition. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's see. Uh, Brianna, is Brianna here? Doesn't look like it. And then Maria, or is it Marie? Marie. <laughs> um, hi, yeah, I am Marie and I live in Canada, specifically in Vancouver. Um, and so this is definitely up my alley, this whole genre of the spooky theme. Um, I just really like it. I, I, I like that, that aesthetic. And um, yeah, I was very excited to be a part of this and to incorporate, or I mean, uh, add my work to this exhibition. Um, and my take on this was using, I'm a big fan of horror movies. So I like the main characters and I thought um, it would be a fun way to use them in a cheeky manner, having them all sitting by the fire, um, came together as buddies, friends, um, and I don't know, sharing their own um, scary stories with each other and their own murderous adventures that they take on in the films that they're, um, that they're a part of. So um yeah I went for that classic idea of you know the long summer nights camping with your friends in the woods and just enjoying each other's company and telling stories with each other and um I wanted to also incorporate the kind of outdoor lifestyle um and yeah and I I typically use wash paint as my medium I just like um the way that it's uh, a matte kind of finish and it's, it, it gives you solid colors um, and I feel like that sort of uh, has gives a vintage aesthetic which I'm very fond of so that's sort of the thinking behind this piece so, yeah that's awesome thank you I love the flashlight it is Freddy Krueger playing the harmonica or no no he's just like covering his face <laughs> <laughs> when I thought of that, I'm like, it's really fun. <laughs> no, it's great. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right. Let's see. Um, Mateo. Is, I know we did have a couple of people from Europe and, you know, they weren't able to make it because it's like, you know, midnight there, but. Yeah, I think he's from Spain. Yeah, yeah, which is really cool. I love that. And uh, Mel, I don't know if Mel was here or not. Just like Marie's work, this piece totally cracked me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you think, you know, quilts and fiber art and, you know, you expect them to be serious and, you know, but then you come across these surprises, which is always great. And I love how artists are just using any medium, you know, to tell their story and share, you know, their what they believe in and what they think is fun, however that is. Uh, let's see, um, Sarah. Sarah here? No, I don't think so. And I'm um, Terry. I think Terry's here. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi. Um, so I'm a Terry. Uh, I'm actually a Canadian expat uh, living in Northern Michigan right now, um, where I'm faculty at uh, Michigan Tech University, where I teach art. Um, in my art practice, uh, actually my background is in um, fiber arts. Uh, my master's of fine arts um, is fiber art from uh, Concordia University in Montreal. Um, and that, that sensibility sort of permeates all of my work regardless of what the media is. Um, but I do, I, I have a practice that's really firmly rooted in um, drawing particularly like in an illustration style. Um, the common thread between the whole lot is uh, craft and kind of a more lowbrow approach to uh, production. Um, like many of you, I too uh, reacted to the 2016 news <laughs> and created a, a fair bit of art in response to that. Um, this being one of them, I was uh, sort of playing in the studio and I had a, a cast wax figure that a student had given me um, years ago, a student that was like playing in beeswax. And I was just doing sketches of it, doing some warm up sketches. And um, eventually some, some darker thoughts were channeled into these warm up sketches. Um, I tend to address a lot of uh, kind of occult themes in my artwork, um, but more from, uh, in the spirit of this show, more from kind of a tongue in cheek uh, or dark humor standpoint. Um, so that's where uh, thinking of you comes in. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank it's a great piece. I'm honored to be in the show too. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's see. Um, Richard. It was funny when I saw this. I'm like, oh, Richard Hamilton. I, you know, there's a famous artist. <laughs> And I'm like, I wonder if there's a spooky thing there, you know, changing names or something like that. A famous collage artist. Let's see, I don't think he's here. Um, Ted, Ted Herman. I know I did see Ted, but it's, are you there, Ted? It looks like they were still connecting to audio, which means they couldn't hear me if they are here. Unless they're on an iPad. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to log in. Um, and it says connecting to audio, so we can definitely come back. Um, let's see, and Darcy, I think, did I see, oh yeah, Darcy's here. Hi. Hello. I'm really nervous. I've never done Zoom, and I've been an artist in the closet for 63 years. And so this is my first, you know, experience with this kind of stuff. Well, welcome. Zoom gets so, easier the more you do it. Oh, I'm just like shaking right now. Aww, you're my <laughs> <amongst> friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's it, this also was a, a great fit for me because it's a campy horror show in my brain normally. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I don't know what to say. I, I, I work with whatever I have around, um, a lot of collage, because that way you can like, just cut stuff up and then it falls in together and becomes something new and has a feel. And, but this, this painting actually was from real life though. Um, I, did, I had an evasion of mosquitoes and I'm terrified of them. And um, it was really difficult cutting out mosquito out of magazines. So I went with the moths. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. You can definitely see the fear. Uh, and I, yeah. I don't like mosquitoes or moths. And I know moths are harmless, but I well, not to your clothing. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great place. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. You're welcome. And, um, and yeah, like I said, you're among friends here. So <laughs> well, thanks for including me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Ryan. Um, I don't know if Ryan is here. Doesn't look like it. Let's see. Uh, Richard. No Richard either. Not a second Richard, actually. Uh, let's see, and Utu. I think Utu is also in Europe somewhere. She's in, I think they're in Helsinki. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, let's see, Joy's here though. I know Joy's here. <laughs> I'm here. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you, Kendra, for including me in the show. I was I was just I just have been such a so tickled by this whole idea and, and all the art in it is amazing. So I'm very happy to be part of it. And thanks, Christine. You're welcome. All you do. Um, so this is this is part of a little series that I was working on last year. I've been collecting these sort of tragic abject stuffed animals from the local Salvation Army free bin. And they're so horrible and dirty, like they can't even sell them for five cents. And and then kind of putting them in house paint and sand and various things. And I, I sort of, to me, they it, it really like there's the spooky stamp idea of like, it's spooky, but it's camp. It's these two ideas happening at the same time. That kind of, I feel that with these two, like depending on the day, I sort of look at this sometimes and like have very tender feelings towards it. Like, oh, that poor thing. And then some days I think it's really funny in a dark way and you know, just have different responses to it based on, I guess, the mood that I'm in. So I think it's simple, but there's different uh, things going on inside of it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joy. Good to see you. Uh, let's see, um, Lawrence, I don't think Lawrence was here. And then um, Melanie, is Melanie here? Were you I'll gonna say, say something, that, Kendra? <laughs> I'll say that this piece um, just haunted me for a long time after. Um, it's really good, um, it's, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit scary just um, <laughs> it's great it's a great piece um is melanie here no i don't think so no so um afterwards go to the exhibition and watch the video and if you want to be haunted which most of the people here do so uh let's see uh, and then leslie and then leslie's here Hi. Uh, yeah. And I'd Hello. like to also say thanks so much. It's really great to be um, included in this show. Uh, I am a mixed media artist. Um, what isn't immediately apparent from the photograph is that uh, many of the body parts are actually knitted. And so the head, for example, and the wings, um, and, and that's kind of a hallmark of what I do, like there's always knitting included regardless of what other materials um, I use. I would also just say that it's really great to have a show that um, opens the door to artwork that kind of walks that line. This uh, specific piece, Seven for a Secret, is a crow and, and he's a little bit severe, uh, which I don't actually feel is my fault. Sometimes when I'm working on them, I have an intention and they choose a different path, which is definitely uh, the case with this crow. But um, I often like to walk that line between, um, I make a lot of monsters and between what's funny and a little bit disturbing. And I feel like a lot of times when people are looking at art like this, it's, it's interesting to see their response because um, what one person finds funny, another person finds disturbing. And, you know, it's just so subjective and it's a really fun line to walk. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. No, it's a great piece. We're glad it's in the show. Um, let's see, um, Ken, I don't think Ken is here. Um, and let's see, Andre? No, Andre. Let's see, Stacy. Stacy's here. Hi. Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank you both for including my work in the show. I often am asked how to describe my work, and I was like, I think spooky camp is the best definition for almost probably everyone in the show, and including myself to probably feel that same way. Um, I began to work with found photos about a year and a half ago, and this is an old cabinet card from the 1800s. And to me, the idea that a photo becomes somehow disconnected from its owner and is laying in an antique store 
store and like what happened there and what is the story is already really spooky, you know, because we have, those are so precious and then how do we lose them. And so I think part of my practice is everything that I, I use is a secondhand object. So nothing is purchased brand new. And it's kind of like intuitively taking objects and putting them together and trying to create both a new dialogue um, with these juxtapositions and a new identity for the person who has lost its identity because it has wound up disconnected from its family or its owner. Um, if I can find information on the back, like a phone number or not a phone number, I'm sorry, like an address or a name, I actually will try to reconnect them to their owners, but that rarely happens. Um, so if you look at the title, this kind of weird connection between the matches um, and this very handsome young man, it became he was charismatic and charming, but quick to anger and this idea of like the flare that can happen with the fire. And so I'm always looking how these juxtapositions and materials can kind of create a new identity or a new dialogue um, that maybe the title will help to kind of allude to a little bit more. Oops, I was muted. Um, thank you. And this one is so the size 11 by nine, that's the actual size of the picture that you found. I should say that's the size of it framed, but the oh, okay. cabinet cards were roughly um, six by eight, the standard oh, okay. size of them. And they're, they're photos, but they're mounted on hard card stock. And they have like very detailed information of who the photographer was, often in beautiful, like etched or embossed um, images on the back that kind of highlights who the photographer was. So they were really just very precious objects in themselves, above and beyond just a regular printed photo on photo paper. It's really interesting how we've gotten away from that as far as photography goes. You know, normally the artist signs the back or, you know, if it's framed, you don't really even see it. So, yeah, no, that's great. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Um, Susan Solomon. Susan here. I don't think so. Um, Donna, I think, yeah, Donna's here. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm okay. Yeah, hi, thank you for including me. I'm, I was very excited when I saw this, this show coming up. Um, it's, it's, yeah, so I like to do what, what's fun for me. And um, this is what, a watercolor painting and with another watercolor painting on top of it. And then um, that's me in a costume. Every, every fall, I work at a place called Scare Farm and I use my, my the fo photos that I take, I often do this. I call them my haunting images. Um, so I was, yeah, I was excited when I saw the this, this show. I, I looked at Kendra's and I enjoyed that. And I, I related to this. And so thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. And I'm sure everybody is wondering, where is Scare Farm? Where are you located? Okay, that's Hillsboro, New Jersey. Okay, that way everybody knows. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you. It's a great piece. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Um, Marcy is, oh yeah, Marcy's here. Oh, you're muted, Marcy. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I'm very new to all of this. Um, I was involved in art and everything when I was in high school. And then I took a 40 year detour uh, <laughs> and have only gotten back to it now since I've retired. And um, I, this depicts my experience commuting, well, I should say I'm in New York. Um, I'm in the suburbs of New York. Um, and I should say that uh, for tw the past 20 years, I've commuted on the subway. Um, and, and my experience, uh, I think, I kind of tried to sum up in this, um, the horror <laughs> of it. Uh, 
and the idea that perhaps you can never get off. So, so that's what this is about. I, I, um, as I said, I'm new to the art world. Um, I appreciate all of the positive reinforcement that I've gotten from you guys from having been chosen for this. Um, I <clears throat> do a lot of portraits, oil portraits mostly. Um, mostly I do portraits. And although this isn't strictly speaking a, a portrait, it's people. Um, people say I should do landscapes. People say I should do, you know, uh, still lifes. Nah, not interested. <laughs> so that's, that's basically it. Um, again, thank you for your positive reinforcement. And, um, you know, it's just the horror of being stuck on the subway. <laughs> well, I thank you. It comes across really well. <laughs> and I always say you do you. <laughs> so it's like, don't listen to anybody else. Do what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And I, got, I, I was really struck by the by the way of how um, how complex the emotion on her face is. I mean, there's a, I, I'm seeing a lot there. I'm seeing tired and um, I'm, I'm just seeing a lot. There's there's layer upon layer that I really that really struck me about this piece. And I, I I think. I hope you keep doing work like this. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Definitely. I never would have guessed that you were new to the art world. And welcome to the art world. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I've only been doing it for about less than a year. Oh, great. Well, keep going for thank sure. <laughs> I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, C.B. Murphy. Don't think they're here. And Nicole? No. Let's see, Paula. I would have loved to hear about this, all this work. <laughs> uh, let's see, Deidre? I don't think so. And um, Jeremy, I don't think Jeremy's here. All right, and Jeremy was the last one. Oh, so, wow, you know, thank you so much. It was so great to hear. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And um, let's see, um, don't forget to share your chat just so you have all the, I, that's a reminder for myself also, um, all of the, everybody's social media handles and stuff like that. Um, you know, I will be putting the video on, um, on the online exhibition, you know, later on this evening, tonight sometime. And, um, but don't worry, I'm stalling. So <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, get to the, the crux of it. Um, um, yeah, I guess with that, thank you all so much for sharing your stories about the work. It's, you know, I, any more, you know, art ex art openings are great, but I love the artist talks. I love to actually hear the artists talk about their work, the process, the emotion, the, you know, the passion that goes into it and all of that. So I love doing these artist talks, even on Zoom, you know, when that's kind of all we have. And, you know, meeting all of you, um, uh-oh, something just came across my screen. Hopefully you can all hear me well. That's really weird. There's like this black thing across my screen. So hopefully that won't be there with the recording. But um, with that, anyway, um, yes, I love artist talks. And um, that is so weird. Um, let's, Kendra, if we want to go ahead and announce um, the winners, did you want to go ahead and announce? <laughs> or, um, and talk sure. about maybe why yeah. or the I, process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta say, I gotta repeat this here. I was really like excited to see everyone's work. Your work was so cool, and um, many of you, I wanted to include everything that you submitted in the show. By the way, because it was just really great work. Um, uh, so when Christine asked me to 
uh, choose for the uh, artists for, for the three prizes. Um, it was, first of all, it was a really hard choice. Um, um, Cause I think, like I said, I, I love all your work. It's, it's really strong and really exciting. And um, uh, I thought about it for a long time and the way that I chose this, the first prize, the, so, the solo show with Shoebox. Um, is no. that the one? Um, oh yes, no. yes. Sorry. Wait. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. The way that I chose it uh, was um, I was kind of thinking about someone's work that um, I was thinking of 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 it being an online show first of all. So which what work really like would work well with like a full show online in from the space. Um, I was also thinking about. Um, uh, what shoebox project has already shown um and trying to fill in uh, introduce something a little bit different and then finally i i wanted to show someone that is is kind of newer to the art world hasn't shown much at all so um so with all that in mind i, I chose uh utu tuli's work um she was the photographer that uh um she's from Helsinki and she has the piece where it's like the time lapse with the weird hand um it kind of surreal kind of um and the way she she finds them is uh she has she has a whole huge body of work of photography and and that series is all about finding um google images where they've been cut off and repurposing them i, th I think um she, she has a few different series. So it's going to be her work for the solo show. And then um, she's not here though, right? I don't think. No. No, okay. Um, and then um, for the $100 prize, I chose Bonnie's work, Bonnie Paisley. Um, I, I thought that that video was, was uh, I loved how complex it was, how you're touching on themes of um, film noir, um, surrealism, uh, slightly political with the Cheeto head, <laughs> um, and, as well as uh, uh, feminism and motherhood. I like that you wove all those things together. Plus your craftsmanship was stellar. Um, so thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Kendra. I didn't even realize there were prizes, so I'm shocked. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and well, it was a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, and then the $50 prize, Jeremy's not here, right? No. Jeremy Rubble. Um, I chose his piece uh, because uh, it had lots of those layers to uh, all of y'all, your work had some beautiful subtlety and layers to it. But I, that piece it was a performance and it was an installation and it was a photo. And I liked that it kind of touched on all those things. Um, so that's why I chose his ones for that. Um, part of me loves prizes and part of me also hates prizes because Same if I could, I'd give everybody a prize. <laughs> y'all did y'all did fantastic work. You should really be proud of yourselves. Yeah. And it, all the work together, you know, yeah. came out so good. And, you know, it's so great to meet all of you and see it's I love seeing new work, you know, and like new people to follow and keeping an eye on and you know, definitely. I mean, congratulations to all of you, you know, and thank you for participating. You know, it's always, I mean, that's why I love being in the art world is just the creativity. It's like, how do you come up with these ideas? You know, each individual artist, you know, everybody has their own stories to tell and just to see how they, they come to fruition through art or music or poetry or, you know, whatever that is is really amazing. And so when you bring a theme like spooky camp and, you know, <laughs> and I love that actually, I think, you know, like, I don't remember who said it, but spooky camp, I think should be a new genre, a new, you know, like <laughs> title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I like that we're, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a specific kind of unique, odd, bald genre. I mean, we're, we're a little bit, <laughs> we're, we're like the, the geeky table in the cafeteria, right? Like the fact that we're all here at this community is really awesome. So it's like, I find I, I'm meeting my people. So it's lovely, lovely to meet all of you. 
Exactly. And I hope, I hope y'all connect outside of this too. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, especially as similar themes, you know, and similar, um, you know, tastes and, you know, likes and stuff like that. So totally. Um, and yes, if you won, um, well, you know, for everybody's listening or the recording, I'll contact you through email and we'll, um, you know, get everything sorted out that way. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Um, you know, a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon, you know, seeing new art and making new friends and, you know, growing our community, right? <laughs> so awesome. Um, any questions or any last comments or anything before we say bye and head out? All right. Well, thank you again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And, um, and, you know, I'll, like I said, I'll have the video posted um, later on and I'll send a link to every, I mean, you have the link for the online exhibition so you can share it with everybody and, um, and yeah, just, you know, keep up the amazing work. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All righty. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and healthy out there. <laughs>